chess kids, let's talk about one of the toughest decisions you'll ever have to face. Eggs or pancakes? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that one either. Kind of depends on my mood, but in chess, one of the toughest decisions will not be what food you put in your belly, it will be whether or not to do active or passive defense. And today, we look at a great example of that from the chess kid voice of Ukraine, Grandmaster Anna Musichuk, in a recent game. Now, she's black, and I'm going to tell you, she's lost. However, luckily for her, she's not playing a computer, she's playing a real human being, and she has to decide what to do about this pawn coming down the board, and possibly this other pass pawn coming down the board. Now, my first thought when I was watching the game was to run the rook back to a square like b8, and then when the pawn comes to h7, we can blockade the pawn. Now, that all works fine if this pawn was not on the chessboard. The problem is, it is on the chessboard, and white can eventually throw this pawn down the board. And when white does so, well, your rook can't exactly go capturing the new queen on a8 because then this pawn will promote. In fact, it's just as simple as pushing this pawn down the board. And if the king runs after the pawn, then the white king will walk in, the white king will take this pawn, and eventually get himself down to g7. That is a winning endgame for white. So that clearly doesn't work, and that's why I'm not a grandmaster. Let's go back to our starting position and see how the professional handled it. She played the move king to f4. Very clever idea. She's actually going after the white king with a counterattack, even with such a limited army. Now, I did tell you that this position was losing for her, but here she would require her opponent to play a very, very difficult chess move. Apparently, the only winning move for white is rook to h5. Now, how many of you saw that coming? Probably not very many of you. The point of the move rook to h5 is that now this rook is weirdly out of the way in case we start this series of checks on the white king. No other square worked. For example, if we go back to our starting position, if the rook moves to h1, well, that's actually the worst move on the board because then Anna would make a skewer, win the rook, and win the game. And if you instead try a move like rook to h3, now the problem is Anna can give check, and when the king runs out, we can actually give check again. And even though the king gets to the third rank and the checks are all done for now because that square is covered, then Anna can take this pawn. And due to the threat of the skewer and taking the rook, which would also stop this pawn, how do you like that geometry? White would have to defend against the threat and that would give black time to come blockade the pawn. And without white's A pawn, that would be a successful defense. So, amazingly, the only winning move, very hard to find, rook h5, but that's what you want to do. You want to put your opponent in a position where they only have one winning move and it's not that easy. And in fact, white, who is also a grandmaster, did not find that move. And white played the very natural move on h7. But this allows Anna to use her active defense. All she has to do now is start a whole bunch of checks, and she did. She played the move rook to b1. Now, white's move is forced. If white's king goes here or here, then Anna plays her patented skewer, which would win the rook and would stop the pawn. So the only move for white is king hmm. to f2, but then rook to b2 check. Okay, you've got to guard your rook, so king to g1, then rook to b1 check. Okay, well, you got to try something different, so king to g2 is the only new square, but then rook to b2 check. And you can see they're just going to go back and forth and back and forth for a draw. White better not try to win this game anymore because if white's king comes to the square h3, it's actually just mate in two. Anna would just check with her pawn. And when the king moves here, rook takes rook. It's just mate. So if we go back, the game actually ended with the king moving back and Anna giving check again. And they agreed to a draw. You can see this king in this pawn. Even though it's such a limited army, the active defense is what got the draw. And I will tell you, if you're ever unsure about which one to go for, go for active defense. There's more chance your opponent will make a mistake when you're putting pressure on your opponent. We saw it here. Now maybe you can go use it in your endgames.